what you do in the night? It's mixing night, mixing night with Ken Lewis tonight. What you do in the night? What you do in the night? We got some dog trees for Mazzy to chew on the night. Welcome to Mixing Night. It is back to stew night. Uh huh, you heard me. Uh, I'm your host, Ken Lewis, here with the lovable hellhound, Mazakeen Lewis, holding down treats. Uh, hang on, whoop, hang on. There we go. <laughs> oh man, I cannot even believe it's October already, but the weather here has been absolutely amazing. Um, by the way, who is going to AES New York City on October 25th through the 27th? Uh, I think me and my crew are rolling in on the 26th and 27th. Uh, if you see us on the floor in our Mixing Night Audio swag, come say hello and introduce yourselves. It's going to be me and Jonathan, uh, Nolan, Sam Gray, and our newest uh, Mixing Night Audio member, Kyle Wolf. Whoop, whoop. Um, and, uh, so we're going to be just roaming the floor and talking to people and soaking it in and I'll probably be in the immersive rooms a lot as well. Uh, let's see. Um, and also tell us what the coolest events are. You know, we need to know. Uh, I just returned from AES Latin America in Quito, Ecuador, one of my favorite countries on earth. Uh, I did four clinics and talks at, uh, AES Latin America, which was a lot of fun. Thank you so much to... All of the AES organizers and uh, folks behind the scenes, and thank you to uh, Christian Morales at Idea Acoustic for all of your hospitality. I thought all of the, AI, the AES attendees were super engaging and interested, and I got a ton of like great questions and engagement, and uh, I was really pleasantly surprised at how many women are in the Latin American audio community, so well done, Latin America. Uh, and I got to spend some time at my place down on the beach in Ecuador, doing some work in my studio and keeping life moving, but slowing down a little bit. Uh, it was, uh, it's just so nice down there. Uh, we got some treats for you next month to show you about that trip. Uh, you're going to see it. You're going to see it. Uh, tonight, I am showing you some of my mastering techniques. What? What can master? Yes, mastering techniques. I master too. I mean, I'm no Chris Athens, but I'm dangerous. You know, I got a little danger in me. <clears throat> so I recently mastered the brand new Grizzly Adams album, Three Year Stint, which is a great freaking album. Go listen to it now. Uh, and it was mixed by Brent Colatello. Stick around for that. I'm going to show you how I mastered uh, on that. Uh, I have some mixing gems for you tonight as well. Oh, yes. A uh, new Pat XY song called Another Day. Not even released yet. We're bringing you the first peak. Uh, and all, uh, the other thing we're doing tonight is a big Focusrite uh, hardware giveaway. Yes. Yeah, we're giving away some Focusrite hardware. You're going to want it. Stick around for that. Uh, I'm bringing in uh, Jonathan Garcia tonight to talk about room tuning, uh, which he does mostly around here. I tune my own room down in Ecuador. Um, but uh, with his advice, uh, but he uh, he mostly does it up here. So I'm bringing him in to talk about stereo and Atmos room tuning uh, using both Sonarworks and the Avid Matrix Studio, as well as our uh, Dutch and Dutch 8Cs, which self-correct really freaking well. Um, so uh, I'm going to give you a quick studio tour of Studio A tonight. Man, we're still in Studio B. We are like this close to being in Studio A. Once we get speakers in there and a couple little other things, we are rolling in. So next uh, next show, we're definitely going to be doing live from that most studio way. And hopefully we will blow your mind because we think it's pretty mind-blowing what we're putting together uh, there. But we'll give you a little taste of it tonight. Uh, we're pretty much uh, just waiting on those last things. Um, it's going to be a fully immersive stereo Atmos and 360 array. Uh, with Atom audio speakers, and uh, it's just going to be bliss in there. I cannot wait, and we got some other goodies to show you guys soon, too. Um, <clears throat> tonight's Sprint Mix is a favorite of mine called the Upside Down, which is kind of a loose reference to uh, Stranger Things, I think. 
um, but kind of uh, how Stranger Things feels like a uh, modern day living right now. Uh, that's kind of what the song is about. Uh, it's a big, heavy driving song. You're going to love it. Um, but why sprint mixing, Ken? Why is it so you can mix faster and get your work done and go home and get out of the studio? No, it's not any of those reasons. Uh, I use sprint mixing as like an athletics tool uh, to train my ears and most of all to train my gut so that when I make a decision, I live with it, I don't second guess myself, and I can make four, five, six decisions right in a row, and then I can come back and I can quickly evaluate all those decisions and touch them up and then move on and make another five, six, seven decisions and then stop and evaluate. And, and you know, uh, in the real world, I usually get mixes, like all of, all of my tracks get into the mix really fast. If I've got a 100 track song, Every track is probably up in the mix within an, an hour. Um, they may not sound mixed for another seven or eight, but uh, everything is going to be in really fast so that I can hear and blend everything against everything else uh, and, and find the best places for everything to live against each other. So anyway, uh, that's, uh, that's sprint mixing for you. Uh, I think I overexplained it. Anyway, um, I am doing this awesome, let me hide word here. Uh, oh, Mateo Reyes from Quito says hello. Hello, Mateo. Uh, man, I had just the best time up in Quito. Uh, all right. Did y'all know that uh, COVID is resurgent? Uh, and if you're going to AES New York City, and I hope to see you there, Please get your booster vaccination for both COVID and flu right now so that they have time for your body's immunity to kick in and, uh, and get boosted because New York City is a freaking Petri dish and there are germs from all over the damn world and you do not want any of the strains of COVID. So um, I'm trying to stay healthy, you too. We're masking up in the spirit of the show has always we started the show under pandemic the first week so it's the mask has been tradition of the show while i sprint so 10 minutes on the clock the best rough mix i can possibly do in only 10 minutes uh faders down to finished i got 30 tracks so that leaves about 20 seconds per track to make every single decision i'm gonna make uh, for where that track goes and what it's going to sound like. Uh, these are mixed stems that have been volume randomized. So the stems already sound pretty good. I just got to figure out the puzzle of how they go back together. Instead of in a line, they're going to go back together like a puzzle. So, all right. Uh, Ten minutes on the clock. Let's start the lights and let's fucking go. Welcome to Mixing Night. You found us. Thank you for joining us. And uh, this is the upside down, as it usually is around here. <laughs>
watching parade now the ship is burning trapped in a black hole where did my mind go I can't even think for myself is this the outside is the outside kiss the charade now watching parade now the ship is burning trapped in
certain Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain And he the sir Alright, welcome back to Mixing Night That was a print What's that? The time? The... Is it off now? Hey, the timer's off. <laughs> Welcome back to Mixing Night. I'm Ken Lewis. That was a sprint mix of the Upside Down. So sprint mix is uh, 30 mixed stems, completely volume randomized, and I got uh, 10 minutes to make the best rough mix I possibly can. And uh, I think that one came out pretty good. I feel like uh, if a client walked in, I would not be mad at that at all. Uh, all right, moving on with the show. Let's get to some Q&A. Uh, Pre-submitted Q&A. David Harrison asks, Hey, Ken, uh, what is your pre-clipper volume target and target RMS for a finished track? Ooh, David, I'm going to be tackling that in uh, mastering later on, but the, the short answer is the... Pre-clipper volume target, I usually don't have one per se. I just make sure I have a bit of headroom and then play with it a little bit until the clipper sounds the way I want it to. And then I usually put like a Pro L2 or something like that um, after the after the clipper uh, and finish it. Uh, so that's usually how I do that. And my target RMS, um, I don't ever really think about luffs when I'm mixing in stereo, only when I'm in Atmos land. Uh, because in stereo, I mean, what's Luff's got to do with it? Got to do with it. Um, and, uh, <laughs> so my target RMS is, uh, usually between nine and seven at my loudest section of my song, you hound dog, you. Uh, do not get overspoiled with treats tonight, Mazzy. It's a long broadcast. Settle in. Settle in, babe. Let's see if she settles in. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, I think that answered your question. Yeah. So my target RMS is like minus seven to minus nine at the loudest sections of my song. Uh, and I'll show you that later on, uh, in more detail. So stick around for that. Uh, Carolina Morales asks, uh, hey Ken, where and how do you think is the most efficient way to start a journey to get more jobs in the industry using the internet? Well, that's a great question because I was just down at AES Latin America with a whole bunch of people who are like from Colombia and Mexico and uh, Brazil and Peru and Ecuador uh, and all of them basically are saying, like, well, we love this, we want to do this for a living, but there's not really much work here. And my only response is that you guys have the exact same access to the exact same Internet that I do. So there are services like soundbetter.com um, that uh, you can be on, uh, it's exactly how it's spelled, soundbetter.com. Um, that I'm on soundbetter.com, and mostly I give critiques on Soundbetter. So if you want a full-on critique from me, hit me up on Soundbetter, and I'm happy to give you one. Um, but, uh, but I digress. Uh, you can be on Soundbetter, and you can build... Um, especially say you're in Latin America, that's a, you have a superpower over me because I don't speak Spanish, so I can't court, uh, Spanish speaking clients on that, uh, uh, forum, but you can. So start now and build over time and you can build a clientele too. Uh, it's not like I just woke up and had all this. It really took me, I'm, I'm 32 years into a professional career. I mean, this shit takes some serious time. And, uh, and it was not always as smooth sailing for me, and it's not exactly smooth sailing now. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, but the other thing is you have the same access to DistroKid that I have. So the Obscene Stealers project we release through distrokid.com, and it's super cheap, and it... Uh, shoots you out to all formats and then just like everybody else in the in the race it's up to you to get eyeballs and eardrums on your own songs and build a following over time get on TikTok and build your presence but uh 
you know, just because you're in a place where nobody knows about, I could say the exact same thing about the kid from Iowa or the kid from Idaho or the kid from Saskatoon or, you know, um, they're in the middle of the middle of nowhere without much opportunity close by. They may have a bit of a leg up because they're in America, but that doesn't that doesn't give them any bonus trying to get into like a uh, Los Angeles or New York city or Miami or anything like that. So, you know, you guys have the tools, it's how you use them. And, and, uh, the people who figure that out and put your head down and get to work, you know, and have a long term plan. This shit doesn't happen overnight. It's, it's long term. Um, Steven asks, Hey, Ken, have you ever asked not to be credited on a song or project because you didn't like it or agree with the directions? If so, how did you approach that situation? Did the song or project end up doing well? Uh, yeah, I, I have a couple times only on projects that, you know, they fucked me or uh, for whatever reason, I no longer wanted to be associated with those people in any way whatsoever. And I knew that uh, making sure I was not on the project uh, burned that bridge, which was probably already br burned anyway. Um, but, you know, you're going to burn that bridge. if uh, So make sure that you want to uh, and have to burn that bridge. If you don't have to, then suck it up. Trust me, not too many people are going to hear that. I mean, very few of my credits are heard by a mass of people and we'll show you later on the Muso app. I'm my work gets like 20 million streams a day, but most of my work probably gets between 0 and 10 streams a day. You know, it's just you get those songs over time that do well and that's your driving force. Um anyway, uh ba -ba -ba. Um, so yeah, usually unless you super want to burn that bridge, just suck it up and don't, don't make any stupid requests and don't ruffle any feathers unless you are sure you want to. Uh, Ian MBI asks, Hey Ken, have you, have you found mixing with changing environments, monitors and control services? Um, has it been challenging in any way or do you adapt quickly using your favorite reference tra tracks and what are your favorite reference tracks to play on a new system to get your ears dialed in? Well, I'll tell you one huge game changer that we're actually going to cover tonight is, uh, hey baby girl, are you okay? <laughs> Mazzy is just spoiling. Come here, bae. Uh, one big game changer for monitoring is is the software uh, monitor correction. Like the, you know, we use Sonarworks and the Dutch and Dutch uh, 8Cs self correct as well, and uh, <laughs> and uh, that technology has just come light years. Um, you know, it, it used to we used to not have any access to anything like that whatsoever. Then it used to be, you know, there, but not so great. And now it's gotten to the point where it's pretty freaking good. I mean, you still want your, to get your room as flat as possible on, on your own. Easy does it, baby girl. The star has spoken. Um, you, you definitely want to get your room as flat as you can on your own, but then something like Sonarworks is going to just smooth out those bumps and the low-end resonances, and the and it's just going to, you'll see later. It's, oh, man, oh, that little bitch. Oh, she did not just bark at me. Um, so after you use something like Sonarworks, most of the time a speaker sounds like a speaker sounds like a speaker within a range. I mean, you know. Nothing quite sounds like these Dutches, but uh, but they're not far off. Um, but uh, but I'd say that's the that's kind of the biggest um, thing is learning your speakers, knowing your speakers. Uh, it usually doesn't take me long after I do the speaker correction shit and make sure my room is set up. And you know, step one, make sure your speakers are are in the best sounding place for them perceptually in the room. So we move these Dutches around until perceptually that's where they sounded the best and the flattest. And then we did all the correction. Oh my lord. This must be what it's like having a teenager. It must be just like this.
no different at all. <laughs> all right, let's get to the... I'm probably behind on the fucking show. What's the next part of the show? Jesus. Uh, it's going to be a fun show tonight, but it's pretty action-packed. Um, oh, our LOL comp update. Yes, let's talk about that. I think they got that graphic in the control room. So we released the craziest little plugin that we absolutely adore uh, from, mixing, from Mixing Night Audio called LOL comp. Uh, and it is not just a compressor, although compress it certainly does. It is really a full tone shaping uh, plug-in. It's five of my chains put uh, under the hood. Me and uh, our partner, Dom Ravinius, who's also a musical genius, uh, designed all of the sonics to it and dialed in these chains for like chain one, the lol chain is my vocal chain, chain two, the panda chain is like my 808 chain, punch chain is my drums, you, you get it, you get it. Um, so we just released a great new update. Uh, if you have LOL Comp, check it out. You can now deactivate the main uh, uh, turning knob uh, and use only the drop-down LMAO section, which is a super powerful tone carving section uh, on on its own. And I use it on its own quite a bit. So, but now you can uh, turn off the, you can bypass the top section and use only the bottom section. Uh, which adds a lot more functionality to the plugin. So you're welcome. Go check it out. And uh, if you guys have had uh, any uh, success or are loving LOL Comp, let us know. We are a young, small company, and we really want to hear when people are loving our products. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of that tonight. But, you know, it's just it's amazing that we, we really worked hard on that thing. And... Uh, to see some of the awesome results that we've seen people get from it um, has been very heartwarming. So thank you, everybody. Uh, let's let's go straight into room speaker tuning. Let's freaking do it. So I am going to bring in the one, the only Jonathan Garcia, the staff engineer around here. And uh, <laughs> hello, Maz. Jonathan needs to. Uh... Oh, Maz. Hey, Maz. You're the <laughs> she is quite vocal tonight. Um, welcome, Jonathan. It is good to see you. What up, sir? It is great to see you here, too. Uh, I think I was told by the people, the boys in the back, if you could slide to the right a little bit. A little slide to the right. All right. So we're Jonathan and I are going to talk about room correction. Um, and uh, that's mostly Jonathan's department. Um, although my ears have to be on the final and make sure that it sounds like my work. Um, so, and start too. <laughs> well, that's true. So, uh, um, let's, let's start with, uh, talking about the, the Dutch and Dutches. So. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So we got these insane, uh, Dutch and Dutch eight C's, which, you know, they don't really look like. I wouldn't say they don't look like much. They don't look like as monstrous as they are from the front. These fuckers, um, uh, Nolan, you can show them. Uh, these fuckers have an 8-inch woofer in the front, plus a tweeter, plus each of these cabinets has two 8-inch subs firing out the back. So there's four 8-inch subs two eight inch uh lower mid range and two tweeters these things uh the the company dutch and dutch and dutch claims that they do uh, 105 db sbl forever <laughs> so Thank he's you, like bro. for how long Thank forever you. just forever just it'll never all you'll be fine 105 no distortion i'm like oh shit I, don't let me fall asleep in that room because i i never monitor that loud <laughs> um so uh, yeah, they are deceivingly loud and well built. But can you talk a little bit about uh, their their approach to speaker correction? And yeah, their approach to speaker design that you know. There, well, I am not the professional here <laughs> for that. Neither of us are. But, um, These are not professional opinions. <laughs> but the um, the design is incredible. They're they're meant to have like no toe and this is kind of like one of the first speakers i've uh ever worked with that 
are built in the sense that you don't have to angle them. They could just be just facing towards you, both facing towards you without like a 45 degree angle creating the perfect triangle. So there's a much bigger sweet spot for the listening area. Yeah, so basically it's like a 360 little ball <laughs> around the front that um you're basically able to place these guys the closer to the wall the better. Um we we Except got, we like, found out in this room. We've got a lot of a lot of sub treatment in this room, which was actually pretty bad for these guys. <laughs> um and we lost a lot of uh base actually. You know. Yeah, we we ended up having to uh move them away from the walls to let the base fill up the room a little bit more than it was because these are designed to be kind of put in rooms that are not designed well and compensate for the shitty room that it that it's been put in so it's kind of like an over-engineered speaker we put it right next to eight inches of uh, fabric wall and insulation, and uh, we, so we had to pull it out a little bit to get the base to rise in the room. Yeah, and actually, like putting the plaques behind them to get the reflection off of uh, ah, that's true. Off the uh, subwoofers in the back. It's not because just flexing. Yeah, <laughs> there's real weight to the back. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, we need to put more plaques up back there to get more reflections. Yeah, that's yeah, why. Yeah, yes. Taylor Swift. Song, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, they, so these these uh, speakers utilize REW, uh, Room EQ Wizard. It's a free software, and it's really really neat. Um, REW has its own eight e, eight C setting from Dutch and Dutch, so they work right uh, glove in hand. Um, and then you're able to. I believe we did. Uh, the, I maxed out REW for this room in the sense of points. I believe it was 20 points. Um, there should be a little sc scan that shows, like, the amount of points that and uh, our actual, like, room tune for it, it was a lot. 8C. Yeah. Um, which is a little bit different from sonar works. Not too different. Because these, you could stop around, like, seven points. Um, just do, like, front, back, sides, and some heights. Um, sonar works is kind of, like, Stereo, you're going to have 37 points, you know, and they measure like each speaker twice. So I guess it what? 74? 37? <laughs> Do math. <laughs> but um, so the amount of control from these speakers, like using their uh, like uh, the Ascend software in conjunction with like REW is really, really impressive because I think we only added uh, to compensate for the eight inches of deadening we had in our low end which was like at 80 hertz like yeah five db at 80 hertz yeah we actually like had to boost a little bit of the sub on them um but once we did all the sub was fucking there Oof. so yeah it, it wasn't too much to uh flatten them out on that and uh and, and then we use we didn't use sonar works on the dutch and dutch but we do mm. use sonar works on i use it down in my studio down in ecuador uh, and I got a pair of Genelex down there, um, and uh, and we use Sonar Works uh, for the Atmos setup in here. And uh, you want to talk a little bit about that setup? Super lovely. Um, so with Adam, it's pretty cool. Um, we can we have all A series, so we're able to put the actual Sonar Works calibration file into each speaker. The only issue is we're not able to put it into the um, subwoofers. So what we the way we get around that is we have an Avid Matrix Studio, which utilizes Dadman, and we after we do our room scan, um, we export the all the calibration files and we input them into Dadman for each single channel. So we don't have any plugins running, or um, any other software while we're playing back in Atmos. And the I just jumped all the way into that, didn't I? And the calibration for the Atmos for the Atmos setup here is nine one four. We usually utilize a separate interface because I've seen I've gotten really buggy results going from our multi-channel output interface and using it as the input as well. Mm. So usually bring out an Apollo, and um, we'll use that as our input for the this beautiful gem right here. Oh uh, yeah, that's the uh, SonarWorks microphone. So the reason that it's 
somewhat important to use the SonarWorks microphone is because they have done a frequency spectrum calibration on that mic and that frequency spectrum calibration gets entered into their correction software with that the serial number on that mic and they know that uh, so they correct uh, for their own uh, anomalies when they correct your speakers and if you're using a microphone that you don't know what the anomalies are then they're going to correct the anomalies on your speakers yeah no like stereo cal calibration will take i'll give it a max an hour just because if you have to input all the chart information to our system yeah. but dolby atmos will take like four hours in total just shooting the room from start to finish and you know and putting all the information but that's just because like each speaker is getting measured like 37 times you know and it's correcting for timing frequency and phase correct okay timing delay comes yeah so um for atmos bef i just want to talk briefly about before we even sonar works anything we spent a lot of time making sure that each pair of our speakers was left right balanced to uh, the perception of mixed position and sounded as equal as possible throughout each pair of speakers in the whole room uh, and um, when the image was slightly to the left or the right we used the little labs micro little labs shift micro shift something like that if you know it, you know it. <laughs> uh, it does very small corrections of both phase and timing. Um, so we were able to put that on one side of each pair of speakers and do very minute uh, timing and phase corrections until we thought we had the best, most solid image. And then we would take that, those values and enter them into uh, the Dadman uh, software for correction. Uh, so... Um, so we didn't keep those plugins on anywhere. We just used them as diagnostic tools. Uh, but then once uh, all of our speakers were as to our ears as phase and time aligned and stereo aligned in each pair as we could, then we shot the room with SonarWorks. Yeah, because we really want like SonarWorks to do as little as possible. Yes, um, 100%. There, if you guys remember... Our Blanket Fort days, <laughs> we we relied on SonarWorks Fuck because, yeah. and you know Thank what, you, we Sonar we Works. they were they were albums, they were made out of that that studio. Yes. So it's a very solid product. Like their software is really good. The al algorithms are getting better, you know. Um, but you really want to make sure that your your room is as dialed in as possible before you get to that point. You know. Yeah. Treat your room uh, before you do anything else. And, you know, not everybody can treat your room great, but do what you can do and do as much as you can do and then dial in your speakers. True. You'll have much better results. Uh, what else is there relevant to talk about in uh, speaker correction land? I guess the different curves people listen to. <laughs> you can get into that. You know, there's like, we have spatial audio, Dolby Atmos, you know, now f flat. What's better to mix in? I know a lot of people are in that realm of like, oh, well, I'll mix flat because whenever they add the curve to it, or like, no, you have to mix with the curve on. Yeah, interesting. We, I think we keep the Dolby curve off here. And my mains, I, I don't want them to be hyped at all. I want them to be flat from 20 to 20 and tell me exactly what they need to tell me. Um, and, you know, the other thing I'll show it when uh, uh, I do this grizzly mastering is um, if you're going to do mastering or high detailed uh, mixes, it's also great to have a great pair of highly detailed headphones, which are these bad boys. The Odyssey LTC XC LCD XC? <laughs> Something like that? Does it? Yeah. <laughs> it's been so long. Well, these are the fucking expensive ones, and my God, they sound amazing. It's like strapping two speakers to your head. The one thing that I will say about them is you wouldn't want to sit here for an hour with these on your head. They're a little bit heavy for that, but 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you're fine. And... 
it's really like strapping speakers to your head and i've never heard 808's detailed uh solo and speakers the way that these are and the imaging from left to right is just amazing so you know having headphones that you know helps you dial in your speakers because then you can listen to your headphones and listen to your speakers and go like no no we're not there yet and uh so you know knowing a great pair of headphones and being able to dial your speakers closer to that can be a game changer for you as well Mazzy Bear, are you spoiling again? That girl just wants all the treats. That's all she wants. All the treats. And I'm a sucker, so why, why wouldn't I give them to her? Uh, we're going to do the fucking Focus Right giveaway. We're going to do the Focus Right giveaway. We're doing the Focus Right giveaway? We're giving the Focus Right giveaway! Oh! Woo! The Focus Right giveaway! Woo! Actually, it is pretty darn cool. Um, uh, Nolan, can you show the uh, uh, the Gleam page? So, in the description of the video that you are watching right now is a link to our Gleam contest giving away a Focusrite Scarlet Octo Pre Dynamics, which is uh, hardware, eight outboard mic pre's plus eight outboard dynamics. Uh, which I uh, think is like a gate and a compressor on every channel. Just nuts. That's like a studio centerpiece for you. So uh, we are giving one away. Uh, we're going to run this contest all month. Oh. We are giving one of these bad boys away. Uh, it's close. Oh. It's almost the same thing. So, yeah, I have another Scarlet that's mine. I'm not giving that away to anybody. We use that shit all the time. So, Sorry, forgive me. So you can't have my Scarlet, but you can have an Octo Pre Dynamics. Um, so we're running the contest uh, all month, uh, giving it away. And you can get more votes for doing certain things, like downloading the Trial of Lol Comp and checking it out. I mean, why wouldn't you? It's the funnest plug-in. If you don't like Lol Comp, we're just not the same people. We're just... And that's okay, because, uh, yeah, uh, we, we've been thinking up some memes for a little comp lately that are pretty funny. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, so, yeah, so the Focusrite giveaway, uh, we're going to announce the winner on the next show. Um, and uh, definitely, man, I'm jealous of whoever wins this. But we're uh, Focusrite says that they'll drop ship it to anybody anywhere in the world. So... Uh, wherever you are in the world watching Mixing Night, and we know you're tuning in, go, uh, win the, go win this thing. I would love to see it go to some crazy place. We've <laughs> we've given our distressor went to Colombia. Uh, New Zealand would be cool. Uh, yeah, I think somebody from uh, Australia or New Zealand won a big IK package from us once. And I think somebody from Bangladesh won uh, some hardware from us as well. Like, you know, we... We find you good things to serve up around here. We do it. Uh, let's see. All right. I think that's enough for the focus right giveaway. Let's get to. I gotta get to new releases. Okay. My man. Uh, this this guy's gonna be rolling with me at AES. So if you if you see uh, this big braided guy, uh, I'll you. probably be somewhere below him. <laughs> <laughs> see you soon, mixing night. See ya. Garcia. Did Mazzy get let out? Mazzy did get let out. Okay. Let's bring it back in. Oh, Mazzy, you cutie pie. Um, all right. Uh, let's get to new new releases. Let me find my new releases. Here it is. Dun, dun, dun. So, uh. You know, as I was putting the show together, there were so many people doing so many cool things uh, in the kind of mixing night sphere and in my world that I just wanted to give a bunch of people shout outs, starting with me, of course. Uh, shout out to me and Michael Moss, the movie trailer boss. We are the dynamic duo Obscene Stealers, and we just put out our sixth single, Roll With The Punches, featuring I Know Fash. Give it a listen. Give all the Obscene Stealer stuff a listen. We, we put out fire. Our music is epic AF. And uh, our actually our fifth single from Obscene Stealers, the one we put out before Roll With The Punches, is called Young Man. And Young Man just topped 100,000 streams on Spotify, which 
is the first time we've topped 100,000 streams and we're just blown away. And and I think some of that is because Grizzly Adams is on it. It's us and Grizzly Adams and, uh, you know, his community listens too. So thank you, Grizzly Adams community. You guys rock. Um, uh, the Our Mixing Night community member, Sam Champagne, just released her new single, Jump Out My Skin. And you can also look for Sam performing in the New York uh, City subways. She is super, super dope. Uh, but check out her new single. She is fire. Uh, all right. Scrizzly Adams' third album titled Three Year Stint uh, came out last month and already has over six million streams. Damn. This guy gets it in. Uh, okay, so Scrizzly Adams' three-year stint, six million streams so far, just released last month, uh, and I mastered it, which I'm about to show you. Huh. Uh, Bruce Udano wrapped up his project with me recently. I produced it and mixed it and mastered it and all that stuff, and uh, he just sent me some swag, so I'm gonna I gotta show you my Bruce Udano swag. Uh, so if you know. If you know Bruce Udano, you know how absolutely spot on this uh, T-shirt is. And uh, so <laughs> thank you, Bruce. And, uh, and my favorite thing, which you're probably not going to be able to see very well, but we'll try. Uh, it was signed, sealed, sealed, delivered with a little uh, emoji um, or like a little uh, superhero guy. And that's Bruce being the superhero. So hilarious. Um, who else is... Oh, and a uh, big shout out to Travis Matt from uh, Louisiana. Recently released an album titled Sounds of the 60s Cajun Dance Halls, which is a fascinating title, and it's a dope album. I listened to some of it. Um, so it not only debuted number one on the world music chart when it came out, congratulations, Travis, uh, but Travis also tells me that he used Lol Comp on every song on a ton of channels, and it really helps shape his mixes. He says he loves the simplicity and the creativity of it. So, Travis, thank you and congratulations on your success and, and uh, for making such a beautiful album. Uh, awesome to hear real-world stories of people using Law Comp. Uh, and uh, so if you got them, send them in to us. We really would love to hear it. And I got another one for you later in the show that's another, like, mind-blowing real-world story. So uh, that's all I got for you for now. Um, and uh, ba -ba -ba, mastering. I am going to... Yes. All right. All right. I'm going to show mastering. Why not? Here we go. So... I recently mastered this Grizzly Adams three-year stint album. My f one, one of my favorite songs on the album, I like the whole album a lot, is the title track, Three Year Stint, which is the closer on the record. But it's like, it's like a modern Springsteen cut. Like if Springsteen was still making young, relevant, uh, working-class music, it would be Grizzly Adams. And... Uh, so uh, he did this record. I think he and Brent Colatalo produced it. Brent mixed it, and they just wanted me to master it, and I was honored to do so. So whenever I master a project, I ask for my client to send me the final that they approved and also um, uh, bu -bu -bu, an uncompressed version of that exact same mix, which is... You know, removing the last stage limiter, uh, whatever gives the push, but not any real coloration like the L2 or the FGX or the Fab Filter, or, you know, do a pass removing that so that I have plenty of room as a mastering engineer to continue to work and treat the final push the way I want to hear it. So they did that. And, uh, uh, and if you can see... I'll make these a little bigger. Oh. So you, you can see that uh, this is their final, and this is the uncompressed song for me to work from on the master. So you can see the, the little bit of a difference in push already. So... Uh, I have set it up so that I can A, B between, boom, wait, where is, I know, 
There it is. Okay. Yes, I believe that works. I want to run right through the valley and walk right through the storm. There's just a feeling that. Okay. So, uh, you're going to have to pay attention a little bit when this is unmuted. You're hearing the mastering. Oh, let's see. I'll, I'll get to this as well. Can we get rid of insert F through J? And we don't need the sends either. Then you guys can see what's going on. And we don't need this whole thing. All right, Ken, I am getting organized like a crazy person here. Boom. Now I can show you some cool shit. Okay, just for routing sake for the show, um, uh, I routed the my mix to be mastered to an aux instead of to the master fader so that I could switch between uh, their final and my master and A, B them in real time for you. Usually I have those two mixes going to separate knobs on my controller and I can just switch between buttons on my controller and I can hear the uh, the reference and the uh, mix bus A, A, B in real time. So, Okay. So here is the unmastered start from scratch um what was it minus 11 okay minus 11 3 uh unmastered from scratch against the uh and master unmastered and uncompressed against the final master just so you hear where i'm starting from i want to run right through the valley and walk right through the storm there's just a feeling that when I got no comfort anymore, you know I've got three years left to settle, and even at the score, but the work done never... So, sounds pretty much like the exact same mix, only a little bit quieter, so I have some volume to make back up, big deal. Um, the first thing that I did was I turned uh, my uncompressed mix way down so that I could get a ton of headroom back on my uh, mixing chain. So envision this as my mix bus. Uh, that is what it is. And I start with a pull tech, and I find this damn pull tech to be the most 3D EQ. I just absolutely love it. It does really amazing uh, things, and let me show you what it does. I want to run right through the valley And walk right through the storm There's just a feeling that when I got no comfort anymore You know I've got three years left to settle And even at the score But the work door never closes from And you can shape with this thing just so beautifully You can just, like, I always This goes on my mix bus whenever I mix It's just a beautiful tone shaping device At the end of your mix to kind of help you craft a little bit Um let me, how do I, I can save this as a preset. Uh, okay, so I can get back to that. So let me, I'll just show you this a little bit. Um, but, you know, I, I test each frequency and I kind of listen and carve and see what works. I thought, you know, I do a lot of uh, listening to the source mix before I do any mastering. And I ask myself, you know, what do I love about this mix? What do I think needs uh, improvement about this mix? Um, you know, what does the song mean? How is it supposed to be interpreted? And then I kind of get to work. And then I... EQ and try and bring that out of the song accordingly before I do much of anything else. So I'll give you a few things on this. I want to run right through the valley and walk right through the storm. There's just a feeling that I get when I got no comfort anymore. You know, I've got three years left to settle and even at the score. But the work door never closes from the three years still before. You know, the work door never closes from the three. I want to run right through the valley And walk right through the storm There's just a feeling that I get When I got no comfort anymore You know I've got three years left to settle And even at the score But the work door never closes From the three years still before You know the work door never closes From the three years still before 
I wanna run right through the valley and walk right through Okay, step two is my favorite go-to glue compressor, the uh, the Manly Verimu, uh, the UAD version is pretty much identical to the outboard, um, which I have sitting right there too. Uh, and I have this pretty much almost identical to the way I set it to my outboard. I have a high-pass filter side chain that uh, removes every everything below 100 hertz. That's a huge game changer for Mixbus Sonics right there, the high pass filter side chain. Some, uh, some Mixbus compressors uh, have a side chain that you can set where your uh, side chain filter resides. That's super helpful. Um, but super slow attack, super slow release, uh, heavy threshold. I'm trying to get it and pounding the input and I'm just trying to get this like reduction between about six and eight dB and with the slowest release that needle barely moves. Check check it out. I wanna run right through the valley and walk right through the storm. There's just three years in and I said oh oh I'm gonna make the best of it. Make the best of it I wanna run right through the valley Walk right through the storm There's just a feeling that I get When I got no comfort anymore You know I've got three years left to settle And even at the score There's something about this very new It's got a really slow attack to it And uh, and that lets the initial transient through But it's always compressing So it's not like it's really... Uh, grabbing heavy every time. Uh, it's very first attack. It can grab a little heavy, so you got to be very careful on the very first attack. But otherwise, uh, something about its slow attack and super slow release gives it this like glue and squeeze that really tremendously helps your transitions going into and out of choruses. You know, pre-chorus and a chorus and a post-chorus and a verse and you know, it's really easy to make each of those sections sound good on their own. But a lot of times, I remember early as a mixer, it was really tough to get the transitions right from section to section. And uh, this thing is like a cheat code with that. Um, and it works just as good in that in the same way. It just, it's a real glue box. Um, and then because I thought the mix was a little bit bright, um, I put a little de-esser on it. Three years in, and I said, oh, oh. I'm gonna make the best of it, make the best of it. I wanna run right through the valley and walk right through the storm. There's just a feeling that I get when I got no comfort anymore. You know, I've got three years left to settle. And there's just a feeling that I get when I got no comfort. Ah, I used that to take a little bit of the bite of the snare off. So. I liked the snare, but I thought the attack on the snare was just a little bit too attacky, and just, but on just the tippy top end. So if you see what I'm doing with this, the way I have it set, it's only reacting when the snare is cracking, and it's like de a vocal. It's just taking the tip top off of the mix instantaneously, only during the attack of the snare, uh, and uh, and really smooths the transients out on a little bit of an unruly track. Walk right through the storm There's just a feeling that I get When I got no comfort anymore You know I've got three years left to settle And even at the score Then the Master Desk uh, Brainworks Master Desk, I like this thing I usually uh, set my output trim at, at minus one So that I can follow this up with a uh, FabFilter Pro L2 Or something similar uh, And have a little bit of headroom to work Um but uh, usually with this, I tend not to do a whole lot. Um, a little bit of stereo enhancement. Um, and I just push into it until I kind of get the right squeeze that I'm looking for. I did tilt the foundation. This foundation is only a tilt, so I'm tilting it heavy uh, by one. Uh, let me show you some of these functions. Walk right through the storm. There's just a feeling that I get when I got no comfort anymore. You know I've got three. You 
know, I've got this deesser on the master desk hitting that snare as well. So I'm really kind of pulling down just the high frequency tip top attack of that snare and smoothing it out, which I liked and apparently Screwsly liked too. Hmm. Walk right through the storm. There's just a feeling that I get when I got no comfort anymore. You know, I've got three. And I took a little bit off the present, so clearly the top end of this was a little grinding on me. Walk right through the storm. There's just a feeling that I get when I got no comfort anymore. You know. All right, then the Pro L2 to finish it off. Um, I usually get as much oversampling as I can. Uh, 16 is great. Uh, you know, while you're working, if you have a full mix going, you can leave oversampling off or put it on times two or whatever your machine will, will allow. And then when you're ready to bounce, you can just pop it up to 16 or 32 and just, it's going to make your bounces really slow, but you're going to get all the benefit of the, uh, high rate, uh, oversampling. Um, and it sounds really nice on here. The oversampling on the Pro L2 really clears up your whole signal in a, in a nice way. Um, dither, I always set 24 bits. Um, output, I always set my brick wall output level to 0. minus 0. 0.1. Um, 0. 0.1 is all you need. That's going to be plenty of headroom for streaming. It's no problem there. Uh, and then the with the Pro L2, I usually just kind of scroll through these and listen to each of them and see if any of them makes a big uh, difference. Um, but often I find just for a final squeeze that I'm not really trying to change the sonics. I'm just trying to get a louder final volume uh, that the transparent is usually uh, the most transparent to get you more volume without changing uh, your sonics. So there you go. Ap aptly named, I guess. Let's find out. Uh, 433, three. let's find out what this bad boy does. Walk right through the storm. There's just a feeling that I get when I got no comfort anymore. You know, I've got three years left to settle and even at the score. But the work door never closes from the three years stand before. You know, the work door. I wanna run right through the valley. I wanna run right through the valley. There's just a feeling that I get. There's just a feeling that I get. You know I've got three years left to settle, and even at the score, but the work door never closes. From the three years stand before, you know the work door never closes. It's all taste. It's all just whatever your ears and your gut and your heart tell you is the best thing and that's all i'm really doing and you know i've been working with Grizzly for so long that i kind of i know his sound i know his vibe i know his fan base and uh and i can as a mastering engineer it's really easy for me to approach being the last person in the chain and going like okay i know what this song should sound i know what the fans expect and you know and i and i try and achieve you know the master that way um, and I think, uh, generally speaking, I'm always trying to just do what's right for the song. Um, so let's see, do I have any mastering questions from the chat roll? Um, uh, Josh S asks, uh, Hey Ken, on a sound treating question, is there such a thing as too flat? Well, um, I mean, my opinion for Atmos is you got like 14 plus speakers bouncing around. I want a really dead environment uh, and, um, you know, like, so that's kind of a different thing than a, a stereo only environment, which you can have a little bit liver. Um, so, you know, it all depends on what your goals are. Uh, um, uh, the 10% asks, hey, Ken, have you messed around with any of the make believe audio plugins? Yes, I have. I, uh, so I'm on this podcast called Faders of the Lost Art. I'm going to talk about it in a little bit. But uh, we recently had Rick Carson as one of our guests on Faders of the Lost Art. And uh, and we were talking about uh, all of their plugins. And I, I like, I mean, my favorite from them is the Sontech. I have I have an outboard Sontech uh, five-band EQ that's just amazing. And they really did the plugin justice. So um, very well done. Uh, let's see, ba, ba, ba. let's go, uh, let's go to events. Where is my events? So much 
fucking cool shit happening. So, all right, uh, October 25th through 27th, uh, me and the guys, actually, we're going to be there 26th and 27th. Me and the guys are rolling through AES New York City. We're just going to be on the floor and, you know, in the side rooms and, you know, uh, looking for shit to do and uh, cool things to discover. Uh, this Friday in Cincinnati, Ohio, our guy Nolan Monogold from Monogold Studios is putting on a free Rocktoberfest concert outdoors at the beautiful Bellevue Park. It's got a great view of the city. Uh, we might go. Um, find out more on Instagram, uh, at Bellevue Pavilion. Um, check it out. It's going to be a fun show. Uh, hopefully the weather holds. Uh, Brian Lucy from Magic Garden Mastering in Los Angeles is doing a two-day Atmos master class at Sweetwater Sound uh, in Fort Wayne, Kentucky uh, on November 10th and 11th. Um, Brian is a fucking genius and has some seriously big Atmos credits and some monster stereo credits. And uh, I, I might be there, but, man, I'm pretty tapped out with building uh, two studios and updating Ecuador all at the same time. Whew, my wallet is hurting. Uh, so, uh, but me and uh, Jonathan went to the Mike Miller Atmos Clinic at Sweetwater, and, and it was fantastic. So, um, you know, if you really want to leap forward with, with Atmos, um, uh, Brian Lucy might be a great guy to learn from. And uh, so check out uh, his his uh, Sweetwater Clinic. Um, AES Latin America shout outs. You know, I was planning on doing like a whole montage and and thanking a whole bunch of people. But, you know, life got in the way and just that didn't come together. So I'm hoping to put a little bit uh, together uh, along with the AES New York uh, thing. But, you know, the AES um, Latin America, first of all, I met like so many of the heads of, of the AES chapters of all the different countries down there. Everybody was just so welcoming. Uh, all of the universities and their students that were in attendance of AES Latin America, I thought, really represented themselves very well. Sounds like they got some really killer uh, audio programs down there. And, uh, uh, yeah, it, it feels like good things are happening down there. So that that was a really cool event. Um, another shout-out to Cloud Microphones. Uh, so I'm now using a cloud lifter on the broadcast. Um I'm not going to show you the one that we're using. Here's the other one. <laughs> so, so we're using a cloud lifter on on uh, this bad boy, and it uh, made a great mic sound even better. This is a Universal Audio um, SD1, and uh, so the SD1 with the cloud lifter is a killer combination. Um, really, f uh, well, I don't. You tell me. Does does my voice sound good tonight? I hope so. Uh, <laughs> um, and then. I got to give a big shout out to uh, Muso.ai. So Muso.ai is uh, this uh, credit tracking app. Um, and you can probably see it now. And uh, it does a really good job of finding your work and aggregating your information. Uh, Muso, Muso claims that I'm in the top 0.1% of all mix engineers on planet Earth. I hope they are correct. Uh, I'm in the top 1% of uh, producers, engineers, and songwriters. Thank you. Uh, and a few other categories. Um, I'm doing well. So 36 billion streams aggregated from Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Uh, and then it tells you like all the top songs you worked on and how many streams each of those songs has. Uh, and it shows you like daily, weekly, yearly, and uh, all-time numbers. It's, it's a really cool app. Um, and, uh, so yeah, um, that should probably be, uh, finishing out. Turns out I get like, right now I'm averaging about 20 million streams a day. When Taylor Swift was on tour during the Eras tour and I worked on three songs on, uh, uh, Midnight's, including Lavender Hayes and Vigilante shit, which were both played live in the concert. So they were on everybody's playlists. I was getting like 41, 43 million streams a day on my work, which half of those were Taylor Swift. It's, the shit is bananas. The influence that girl has is just amazing to see and uh, so, so well earned. Um, let's see. Are we going to go to the story of Lol Comp? Oh, my goodness. Uh, let So we put out this awesome... Here, let me show it on the screen. 
um, we put out this awesome new plugin from Mixing Night Audio called Lull Comp. And uh, we absolutely love it dearly. We all worked really, really hard on it. Um, and uh, uh, Lori put together the story of Lol Comp to kind of tell you the behind the scenes of how the how it all came together and everything else. So I will let you take it away. Also, uh, before I play this, big shout out to new Mixing Night uh, audio team member Kyle Wolf. Uh, Kyle Wolf uh, did all the video editing for us on this, and he's been helping us out with a lot of the uh, Lol Comp videos and stuff, and huge help lately. So thank you, Kyle. Much appreciated. And let's roll the story of Lol Comp. Hey everyone, Lori Lewis here to tell you the story of Lull Comp. Ken, Dom, and I brainstormed a ton of ideas, and Lull Comp was one of those. Ken simply wanted a giant LOL with a smiley face dial in the center, and he drew it out and passed it off to me and asked me to bring it to life. Like Green Haas, Lull Comp was created straight from Ken's workflow to create five of his most used chains. And the chains are the vocal chain, uh, which is the lull chain, the 808 chain, which is the big and buzzy chain, punch chain, or the kangaroo chain, which which is one of Ken's drum chains, the saturate or the beautify chain, which is the, the peacock chain, and then lastly, dragon chain. And this one, Ken didn't have a set um, distortion process that he used, so Ken and Dom set out to deliver a great distortion effect. This chain has been probably one of the biggest surprises in just how versatile it is and, and how many different things you can use it on. But then we got Telegraph Creative involved. I passed off my design and they came back with this beautiful design, the spaceship. We just love this graphic. How do we tie a lull emoji or any emoji into the space theme? And so in the end, we decided that each of the chains would have their own unique look. And we started with the smiley chain. We started with like a circus idea and like with a little gesture here, and then we passed it off to Telegraph Creative. We forgot to tell them that we definitely wanted this smiley face. This smiley is actually our sundial from the Greenhouse plugin, and we wanted to bring it over and kind of tie the plugins together. So we went back to the drawing board and we came up with like an emoji background. We did like a sunburst or starburst background. Finally, Dave came up with a great design to do sort of a stand-up comic stage with the, the purple brick wall and he delivered this to us and we knew we had it. Then we had the panda chain, and in the beginning of the panda chain, we absolutely knew we wanted a karate dojo. So we had the background from the get-go, but it too got revised. Uh, one of the iterations, it had big teeth, and then it had no teeth. And then finally, Dave settled on this amazing design with this awesome sleeve with the bamboo L's and the parallel button, and we were just thrilled. And so this is our panda chain. One thing I wanted to point out to you guys is in this chain, there's like this little tapestry on the wall. That's like a little Easter egg that we've added in. Um, it's essentially the Japanese like slang symbol for LOL. Then we have the kangaroo. And at the start, we knew we wanted like a boxing ring, but there aren't like any kangaroo emojis. So I came up with something and I passed it on to the professionals and we loved the boxing ring and we loved the, the kangaroo, but you couldn't tell it was a kangaroo because the, the ears were cut off. So Dave came back and gave us a different design with the ears not cut off, but then the, the face was too small. So we tried a different design, which we didn't like quite as much. And then we settled on this amazing design. And one of our favorite parts of the kangaroo was deciding on the faces, right? Because we knew we wanted like the, the cold stare and then the, the eyebrow and then of course a black eye and then finally the spiral eyes. And we think the kangaroo chain is a knockout. Then finally, we have the peacock. Didn't have an emoji to work with, so I created something, passed it off to Telegraph Creative. Dave Hildebrand knocked it out of the park almost from the get-go. We absolutely fell in love with this peacock. A couple of things I did want to point out to you, though, because, again, there wasn't a lot of changes on this one, but wanted to show you some of the early designs. Like, in the beginning, we weren't sure how to, to show the coins when they weren't active, so we did, like, super dark ones. But see here on the dial, some of the... The, the ticks here did a couple different designs. Another funny thing that we did was we were thinking about like adding venting because we wanted something on the L's. So we took our mixing night icon and put little vents on the L's. And then we decided to come up with like a VU meter. And originally we had VU meters actually on both of them. And then we ended up putting a gain reduction on the other side. So this came, you know, there were a lot of little design things along the way and just wanted to point some of those out to you. And like I said, we were completely in love with our peacock. 
And then we have our dragon chain. We knew we wanted the background to be like a cave with treasure. Um, I took a stab at putting something together and we passed it off to Dave who gave us probably the cutest dragon I've ever seen. The only thing was we wanted it to be fierce because this is like the destruction chain. We asked him to try again and he actually delivered. This was the first one that we got to see the skin with the, the stone looking um, L's and the different parallel button. Um, but we had him try a fierce dragon and it wasn't quite right, it didn't fit the other design. So at this point, I, I, I decided that I wanted to try um, to create a dragon myself. So I created this dragon, which of course it had its own metamorphosis. It's the horns were too tall and the color blended in too much with the background. I changed the color to like a grayish color and tried to make them a little bit squat. But again, the same issue, the dial wasn't taken up enough with the face. So then we went back to the drawing board, we talked about some ideas and I decided to curve the horns in the design we went with. Um, now at this point, Dave gave us lots of options for the faces, but we really wanted our dragon to be a fire-breathing dragon. And, and so at this point, I want to say a giant shout out to Jonathan Garcia because he had the idea to put like the flames like opaquely in front of the dragon, uh, giving it that sort of fire-breathing look. And of course, to Dave Hildebrand for actually pulling it off. But um, this was just amazing and um, I think it looks unbelievable. It's just badass. Believe it or not, this section was not part of the initial design, but Ken, Ken and Dom decided to add it on. And this first design was done by Dom and it's so super clever with the LMAO. And so I have to ask, what's better than a lull comp? Well, a parallel comp, of course. But it's not just a clever play on words, it's actually quite powerful. And in fact, Ken says, this is probably the most powerful element of the plugin because it enables you to shape tones um, super fast, cutting out the need for so many other tools. And I'll take you through the different sections, including like the cuts. So the cuts are filters. Here we have the levitate section and when engaged, the levitate is a tilt, which makes things either thinner and brighter or fatter and darker. Then we've got the mash, which is a simple button, but when it's in use, it's like an extra limiter stage in case you want like just a little more. And then we've got awaken. And when awaken is turned on, you have a choice of two bands, either lavender or haze, which incidentally is another little Easter egg in our plugin. It's a nod to the Taylor Swift song that Ken and Dom worked on. Here you can choose between lavender, which is a mid-range exciter, or like it awakens that you're mid-range, or you can go with haze, which is an air band. It adds air and bright brightness to say a vocal or like a hi-hat. And then you've got Oxidate. And when utilized Oxidate, you could choose one of five reverbs. Our design had it so that you could choose a reverb, but not how much of that reverb you could use. But during the beta testing, our beta testers suggested that we should add more to it. So we went back and now you can not only select which reverb you want, but also the amount that you want. So thank you, beta team. You made our plugin better and we really appreciate it. Finally, I just wanted to say thank you to you guys, the Mixing Night community. Hard to believe it's been three years or three plus years that we've been doing this, but thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are the best. I want to say thank you to Ken challenging me, for encouraging me to let my creative flag fly, but also for being my life partner, my business partner. So thanks, babe. Also a huge thank you to Dominic Ravinius for your friendship, for your creativity and your drive for excellence. You definitely made this plugin better. Gary Grutzek, the most badass developer. We love that you're on our team. Thank you so much. Huge thanks to uh, Cliff Sims and the Telegraph creative um, team, including Abby Zajac, Michelle Brown, and of course, David Hildebrand. Special shout out to Jonathan Garcia, not only for helping with the plugin, like I told you guys before, but also we decided to move. I couldn't have done it without you. And truly, again, any chance I get to tell you, thank you. <laughs> um, and then finally, um, to the alpha and beta testers, because you guys really did help us make this plugin even better. So if you haven't yet, I strongly encourage you to buy LulComp or download the, the free trial so you can enjoy our silly and unique GUI and experience the power of this plugin and see for yourself why we say LulComp is mixing made easy. Thanks guys, I really appreciate it. Bye. Oh, now we are in Studio A, people. I am not going to put me on camera. I'm going to put my studio on camera so you can see this. So we are still sans speakers and lighting. So we are making do. <clears throat> but uh, come the next mixing night, boy, we are going to have everything in place. Sounding amazing, working amazing, super dialed in. 
So let me give you a little tour from roughly mixed position. Uh, Am I back? He is back. Oh, I'm back. All right, sorry about that. That's live TV. That's live broadcast for you. So I'm standing about mixed position. We started with a 23 by 23 by 11 room. We finished it, I think, at its widest points from there to over there at about uh, 20 by 20, maybe 19, uh, maybe 21 by 21 at the widest, at the narrowest at these points right here, it's about 16 or 17 across. Uh, our ceilings went from <clears throat> um, 11 feet to about 10 feet. And uh, that's a big base trap right there. Uh, this is roughly mixed position, so if you're looking at speakers, that's going to be... Um, Atmos side, left wide, left center, right, right wide, right side. And then if I continue to turn around the room, it's not lit yet, uh, then the um, back uh, right is going to be there, and the back left is kind of behind where that glaring light is. Studio door. And, uh, and you can see kind of the curve we took from its widest point, that's about maybe 21 wide at its widest point, and took it up to a uh, point up here. This is kind of a base trap uh, for this room. And uh, so it's about 18 feet from front wall to this point right here, and about uh, 21 from the front corner to the back corner, 10 feet high. And, uh, and then you can see the mounts for some of our Atmos rig, and you can see the cloud above mixed position. Bum, bum, bum. We have these uh, swivel stands for the uh, uh, speakers so that we can more easily put them into place. And that's pretty much the tour of Studio A. So one thing uh, I'll note about construction so the construction of this was we stripped it down to the bare shell and we insulated and then we drywalled, I think, uh, regular uh, half-inch drywall. And then we framed out um, and insulated again. Uh, and then we drywalled two layers of 5 8 inch drywall and then we insulated again with fabric wall and then covered the fabric wall. Uh, and we'll be able to tune the room with these base traps that are kind of in these corners. We'll be able to fill those up or or take material out uh, if we have too much or too little base in the room as well as we can treat this trap back here. And uh, um, yeah, so I can't wait to show you guys the big reveal on the room when all the speakers are in and the lighting is in and everything. Oh, it's going to be so amazing. Uh, and that's going to be next month. So tune in for the November uh, 1st episode of Mixing Night for uh, That Mo Studio A. And let, now let's take it to Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night Man of Mystery with free stuff for you. What's good, Mixing Night family? This is Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night Man of Mystery, back with another Mixing Night Man of Mystery moment. And in this segment of Mixing Night Man of Mystery moment, we're going to talk all about some free plugins that you can use in your music productions. Did someone say free? All of these plugins will be free that you can download right now. We're going to start with Ad Astra Ambiences from SoundPaint. If you're not familiar with SoundPaint, it is a spinoff from the 8DO uh, audio company, and they have this uh, product called SoundPaint where you can get purchased 
products and also download free stuff. So check out the website. We will include a link in the Discord. Click on free download, but you can start with Ad Astra Edmondson's. And then if you purchase things, you can get 15% off just by joining their newsletter or email list. Next, we have uh, the Blueprint series by Fracture Sound. They are starting this new series of free instruments also. A lot of our favorite developers are starting a free series of instruments. And they started with the Blueprint Keys, I believe is the name of it. Um, if you click on Blueprint, again, we will include a direct link in the Discord. And you can find out about Electric Keys, a vintage electric piano. You can download it and use it for free. You might have to check to make sure if you have contact and the download size to make sure it'll run on your system. Next, we have Project Sam. We did mention this uh, last month. They are doing the free orchestra version two. And for every month for the next year, you can get a free instrument. So the September release is Bold Legato Brass. I believe the August release was uh, String Instruments. So you can definitely check out orchestra, the free orchestra two. Check out the free orchestra, the original one, and download all that stuff right now. Sunascore has released a Dole Ensemble, D-H-O-L, which is a drum um, percussion instrument, and you can check that out on this website. It is for free. They also have some other free instruments that you can get by down by joining their newsletter. If you see that there, join the newsletter, get two free contact instruments. The Dole Ensemble does require a full version of contact. Um, it may not work in the free version of contact uh, called contact player, so definitely make sure you have the full version to get the full uh, advantage of the sound there. Next, we have Polyverse filter, Filtron from Polyverse Voltage Controlled Fun Filter Things. This is new, as you can see there. Um, uh, Filtron is a 12 decibel state variable filter that can smoothly transition between low pass, band pass, and high pass. So, if you're looking for an interesting filter for free, check out Filtron from Polyverse. Next, we have Transpanner from Artists in and 3dp i try to say that um artists in dsp uh transpanner 3d audio panning so check this out a free plugin that you can download next we have ohm force their legacy plugins so if you go to the website here you want to scroll down to legacy plugins and i really like this statement here where it says it is free but also it is free of support there's no support for these instruments so just be wary if you do download it might or might not work with your system but they're free so definitely check that out and then we also have i usually don't suggest uh free stuff that only work on one platform for this, but this one is a little too good to not share. This is only for Mac, so sorry for the PC users. Hopefully Wide Blue Sound will bring this over to PC soon, but this is the audio plugin uninstaller. So I've used this because I have way too many plugins that I only used once or didn't use at all. And this is great for just going through the plugins. It'll scan your plugin folder and you can just use this uh, uninstaller to uninstall the plugins on your system and it, and it uninstalls all of the associated files with that plugin. So a great way to easily uninstall plugins currently only available on Mac. Uh, please reach out to them if you have a PC. Um, I would hope that they're working on a PC version, but too good not to share. And finally, a little bit of AI. We're not gonna go too deep in the AI realm today but this is a free pop remover i believe there's also a russell remover from crumble pop a company i just found a couple weeks ago um it says try for free there is pricing if you go to pricing you can see that the starter comes with the pop remover and russell remover all for free so you don't have to pay for any of that um so there are tools that you can look into there's more in their higher paid plans uh but the free plan comes with pop remover and russell remover great for removing pops and russell noises from your recordings um if you're doing podcasts if you are doing like singing stuff of course um if you're doing music creator it, it is available for pc and Mac. So check out Crumble Pop. Again, a new company, um, Boris FX, I guess. Um, I'm not too familiar with them yet, but check it out and see how that works for you. Again, this has been Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night Meta Mystery, with another Mixing Night Meta Mystery moment. Be safe and be well, everyone. All right. All right. The coolest thing about Mixing Night is <clears throat> if you are flat broke, and creative you can find the dopest tools out there to do really really high level creative fun stuff and marcus manderson harvests them all and brings them right to you all in one place uh we've he's got a page on our mixing night discord uh channel as well that uh i believe he keeps all of his best uh free lists in one place so thank you marcus you are a constant wealth of information for our mixing night community we love you <clears throat> um Next, I want to shout out some truly, truly awesome friends. Uh, I got to give the biggest shout out to Preston Prizzy Reed, this dude. So Preston, you know, came up as a young engineer, no credits, and he's built his way up to being like working on Grammy winning uh, albums and multi-platinum albums and everything else. And so uh so I I sent Prizzy a, a copy of Lolcom 
<clears throat> and uh, he loved it. And he, I, I didn't ask him to do this. I didn't know he was going to do this. He posted up on his uh, Instagram um, the song, uh, the the Usher song, and then the, hopefully the video is playing. And then he's got a picture of his doll with Law Comp open to uh, Panda Chain. So apparently he was Panda Chain on Usher's lead vocal. Mind blowing to me. Um, thank you, a gazillion Prizzy. So damn cool. Um, <clears throat> so the uh, the new Usher single, Good Good, um, is mixed by Prizzy, and uh, you know it's so rewarding for us to see uh, the the things that we build um, connect really strongly with other people as well, and that's it's just that's very rewarding for us because. I know that Law Comp was just a game changer for me. I mean, if, like, the next mix I'm about to pull up uh, when I show it to you, it's like every channel's Law Comp. It's just so easy to shape things without really thinking about it. Um, you'll, you'll see. Uh, I think I've already shouted him out tonight, but why not again? Shout out to Kyle Wolf, our newest member of the Mixing Night Audio team. Uh, <clears throat> he's helping out with some video editing. His IG is uh, pretty... Uh, P-R-O-D-B-Y, prod by Kyle Wolf. Follow him if you like. He makes some dope beats. Uh, my good friend, Ken Van Druten, better known in the live sound world as Pooch. Uh, Pooch and I went to Berkeley College of Music together way back in the day, and we've kept in touch, and he's a dear friend. And he's awesome. Uh, uh, and I think he's currently front of house on Travis Scott right now. Yeah, I know. And he just did, uh, he was, he's was he been touring with Iron Maiden, and I think he just did uh, Jay-Z in Paris. I mean, it's bananas. He's that level. So uh, Pooch has a new four ninety nine a month subscription um, on his, uh, I think it's on his Instagram. I'm not really sure how you get it. Uh, but he basically drops gems all month uh, to his subscribers. And, I mean, if you've got any aspirations for front of house or monitor mixing or anything like that, dropping five bucks a month for him is worth its weight in bags of gold um he's a really uh brilliant and he's very uh free and open with his knowledge and uh so respect um <clears throat> and you can follow him on instagram at foh underscore engineer underscore pooch uh big shout out to austin hall at make pop music uh, he recently did a video on Law Comp, which we make your drum sound love. absolutely and, uh, huge and really pop really out of your mix. Awesome. What we're gonna do is we're uh, Austin also just released a new song as an as an artist called "Ruin My Life." Uh, check it out on all streaming services. It's fantastic. Austin Hall, "Ruin My Life," uh, super dope singer, and his production chops are fucking fire. Um, <clears throat> my new podcast. We've been doing this maybe eight, seventeen, eighteen weeks now. Once a week, my new podcast, Faders of the Lost Art. Faders of the Lost Art. I love that name. So uh, it's me and four other pro mixers. I cannot even believe I am on this panel of geniuses. Uh, Bob Horn, Nico Hamui, Farid Salama, and the one and only Dave Pensado. Yes, it's the five of us on the Faders of the Lost Art podcast. Uh, it is an absolute blast. We usually go like uh, 80, 90 minutes. Um, I think it's available on YouTube, but we're trying to get it on podcasting. None of us know how to do that shit, so we're working on it. And we all have day jobs. <clears throat> um, but uh, uh, but check out Faders of the Lost Art. It's been a lot of fun. And, you know, we often have uh, really great guests on, like Stephen Slate and Jean-Marie Horvat. And, uh, man, we've had some absolute killers. Um, <clears throat> let's see. What else is going on? Uh, so, yeah, check out Faders of the Lost Art and check out uh, all of my fellow faders on of the Lost Art. Those guys are truly brilliant. Um, uh, and I think you can... All of the socials are just at Faders of the Lost Art, but YouTube is the place to get us. Um, let's see. What is after my awesome friends? I could do some mixing techniques... Uh, I'm, you know, jump around, jump around. Uh, I'm going to do ear training first, and then I'm going to finish the night with mixing techniques. Actually, I'm going to do some Q&A, then I'm going to do ear training, 
uh, which is what frequency has been removed. Ooh, rapid fire, 15 in a row. It's, it's a good one. Um, uh, so ear training is coming up in a few minutes. <clears throat> um, right now I will answer some questions off the chat roll. Timothy Benjamin asks, Hey, Ken, what is your rough guideline for which reverbs to use for vocals and instruments? Uh, my rough guideline is flavor of the month. Um, whatever I'm like, I go through phases. Sometimes, you know, I'll use like Valhalla vintage verb a lot. Sometimes I'll use, uh, uh, waves, H verb, uh, you know, there's like 10 different verbs that I reach for, for different consistent reasons that kind of have a sound. And I like that sound. And usually it's, you know, one or three presets per uh, plugin that I almost ever go to. But I'm like, oh, I, I, want, I want this kind of a verb. Let me go to that. And I'm a big fan of spring reverbs. Um, the uh, audio thing, Springs, is a pretty cool reverb. Uh, somebody else just put out a new, new spring reverb. I can't remember who it was. Um, but, but, yeah, the great thing about spring reverbs is they're typically really dirty, and they have a lot of character to them. They don't sound like these nice, pretty, clean reverbs. They're usually, spring reverbs are sourced from the springs uh, inside of guitar amps. So if you ever, like, hit a guitar amp and heard it, like, blah, 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 wobble and shit, that's the spring inside of it, like, getting unruly. <clears throat> so uh, they, they don't sound anything like other reverbs. So if you want real character reverbs, reach for a spring. Um, Simmer Music asks, Hey, Ken, when you deliver a mix without mastering, how loud do you deliver it to your client? Do you leave room for the mastering engineer? Uh, I don't deliver a mix without mastering. Um, what I do is I deliver my final mix, which the client has approved and revised and tweaked until they love it. Uh, and then I offer, then I print another pass of that exact same mix without my last push plugins um, that are really just volume plugins like the Pro L2, sometimes the Master Desk, uh, um, stuff that like is not my tone shaping stuff, but is just like, okay, I'm trying to get this up to master volume so that my client approves it. I'll, I'll, I'll remove that stuff and I'll print um, another set of full passes like that, which I call the uncompressed passes. And the mastering engineer can hear the final, which was approved by the client, so he has a bar or she has a bar, and then they can work off of the uncompressed to either match or beat my final. And uh, and that's usually how it works. <clears throat> so that's what I do. Um, so any more questions, fire away. We're getting to 20 minutes to the end of the show. I'm going to go to ear training. And then I'm going to give you some cool mix techniques. Um, man, if you have <laughs> if you have not given Lol Comp a run yet, oh, it uh, we we just smashed it. It's so good. Um, yeah, I, I can't lie. We smashed it. Uh, let's see. I'm going to ear training. Ba -ba -ba. Ear training. Three year stint. Yeah, these uh, Dutch and Dutches have been great to master on. Um, I was mastering on my Adams before, but uh, these are just, you just can't fuck with these speakers. <laughs> They're pretty fucking good. Uh, but yeah, I feel like the mixing and mastering choices are coming super easy. All right, uh, ear training is around about 10 minutes. Um, the uh, ear training worksheets are in the description of the video you are watching right now. Go click the description, download the PDF so that you can follow along and plug in your answers as you go. Uh, there's a full description of what's happening, but this is rapid fire removed frequencies. You're going to have to guess what frequency gets removed. So here's a hint, and I think I give it again in the description. If it sounds light and airy, something in the low end got removed. If it sounds dark and, uh, you know, muffled, something in the high end got removed. If it sounds kind of filtered, it's probably something in the mid-range that got removed. If you can hear the highs and the lows, but, you know, it sounds like the enunciation frequencies all got removed. That's probably around, like, 1 to 4K. Uh, so there's your hints. Uh, 
10 minutes. Um, I think there's a total of 75 points to be had. Bragging rights on the line. This is a tough one, uh, but hey, this is what we're here for. Everybody's trying to improve their hearing. Me too. Without further ado, thanks for uh, tuning in to Mixing Night. Here's your training. It's Mixing Night Ear Training. What rapid fire frequencies get removed? Okay, you're going to listen to the unchanged dry start. And then as I call out each additional section, you're going to hear what frequency gets removed, not boosted, removed. So if it gets brighter, something in the bass got removed. If it gets darker, something in the high frequency got removed. That's how that works. So you get five points for an exact guess. It will always be on an exact frequency like 700, 200, 1K, 5K, 8K, things like that and two points for guessing the adjacent frequency closest to it. Total of 75 points possible, 15 examples. Let's go, Jedis. Dry. Every hour, every minute, every second, through the night of the night, I'll be loving you right seven days old. Here we go, one. Okay, one more listen through. Get your guesses in by the end of this listen through and then the big reveal. Dry. Every hour, every minute, every second, the night of the night, I'll be loving you right seven days old. Here we go. One. Another time, oh, oh, oh. you're up around me and you give me love, and that's 
four. Okay, how did everybody do? It's time for the big reveal. Here we go. Drive. Every hour, every minute, every second, you know. Here we go. One, five K upper mids. Weight of the world on your shoulders. Two, two hundred hertz lower mids. I must be favored to know, yeah. I'll take my hands and trade your three, three K mid range presence and harshness. Hundred hertz, feel that kick. Five, five hundred, a real narrow boxy range. Six, one K, mid range. Seven. No EQ. It's the way that we can ride. It's the way that we can ride. Oh, think I'm meant to win another life. So break me up another time. You're up around me and you can Eight. Eight K. Upper mids and highs. I'll be loving you right. Nine, three hundred, lower mid. Ten, seven K, close to the high end. Eleven, four K. Take control, type to take your soul, take your phone and put it in the camera roll. Let them close at the door. What you ain't for? Better come and hit your goal. Uh, he jump in both feet. Twelve. Two K. Mid range. Seven different sheets. Seven different angles. I could be your fantasy. Open up, say, ah. Come here, baby. Let me swallow your pride. What you want? I can match your vibe. Thirteen. Nine K. This you make my day feel like weekend. I make him never think about cheating. Got you skipping work and me. Let's sleep in. Yeah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 
14, 700, that real boxy nasal range. Fifteen, 6K, top of the upper mids. All right, how did everybody do? All right. So uh, post up on the chat roll or post up on the comments and uh, let everybody know how you did. Let's see who's got some bragging rights tonight. I know this is a tough one. It's really hard because your brain is used to hearing the other way. Your brain's used to hearing the boost, not the cut. Uh, and this kind of challenges you to think differently because in the moment when you're working on audio, you got to instantly diagnose what's wrong. And sometimes what's wrong is like, oh, there's just no 1K in this thing. Oh, the mid-range is gone. So there you go. <clears throat> uh, all right. Hope everybody liked that one. Uh, I'm going to show you guys some mixing techniques to end the night. Fire away with questions on the chat roll if you got them. If you want me to show you any mixing techniques, I'm going to pull up another song from this awesome artist, Pat XY. Uh, I just mixed for him called Another Day, uh, unreleased. He's letting us use it for the broadcast. Thank you, Pat. Uh, really, really cool project. I mixed this whole album. And uh, uh, <laughs> so... All right, just so that you can actually see that I'm not kidding when I say that LolComp has replaced so much of what I do. So first off, you've got to know that uh, I always put um, one instance of uh, SSL channel strip on every channel. Most of the time, they never get used. They're low DSP, so they don't color the sound or anything if I don't use them, but they're there if I instantly need them. And I've got the SSL controllers for those, so... Those are all there, <clears throat> most of them unused. Every instance of lol comp that I'm using, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, uh, sixteen instances of lol comp, and maybe three or four of greenhouse. I mean, it really is uh, my go-to tone shaper, and I, and I guarantee you all these things are dialed in and set with different settings and doing different things. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I, let me show you some of those things. Um, let's see. What, what do I have that's cool? I well, the vocals for sure. I had a feeling this would happen. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of the verb. I had a feeling this would happen. I knew it right from the start. Bypassing law comp. I wonder if this time to start again. Oh, baby. I'm asking for a chance, just me. Probably took me about 15 seconds to dial that in. I just kind of push up the lull dial until I'm getting <clears throat> the amount of compression that I want uh, on the vocal. And then if I want a little bit of extra squeeze, especially if he's singing kind of really soft and breathy, I like a little bit of that extra mash to kind of take what the uh, compressor is giving me, evening it out, and just level it out a little bit more and give it a little bit more attack, uh, which on a soft part like that is a nice uh, translation. And then I'm adding a fair amount of reverb to each uh, stem. Uh, these are mono reverbs. Um, you, I, the law comp is a stereo reverb. If you have a stereo instance, this is a mono instance. And I will often use mono reverbs because they just kind of sit behind whatever sound that you have them on and they give you a little bit of depth and, and dimension. So if you can hear uh, the difference, um, I don't know how loud this is. It may not. <clears throat> is this very loud in the, in the broadcast? I had a feeling this would happen. Uh, I, I hope it is. Okay. Um, so all the reverb that you're hearing right now is lol comp, and then I will add 
uh, the next reverb, which I believe I was just mentioning, H-verb. I had a feeling this would happen I knew it right from the start So I, I did a few things mixing these lead vocals. <clears throat> First thing I did was uh, time align them. Um, and where is it? Uh, Synchro Arts Revoice Pro 4. So what you do is you select, so these were not so perfectly performed uh, when they came to me. So I, I listened to both performances and I picked the one that I felt translated better uh, by itself to the music. And I made that my lead. And then <clears throat> what you do is in Audio Suite, you uh, select Revoice Pro, and then you capture the guide that you want uh, to be your source. And you capture that, <clears throat> and then you capture the <laughs> this <little> bitch. <laughs> oh. then you capture the double that you want to <coughs> to snap to the exact energy <coughs> energy and timing of the other vocal. So I capture that and then spot and then it actually snaps it uh, so that all of the alignments are much more together <clears throat> from a timing and energy perspective. And then when you add, oh my goodness, and then when you add auto-tune to that, it, uh, it, locks in e <clears throat> it locks in each of the lead vocals a little bit. Um, uh, it's not more mono. It feels like a single part. It feels more like a single part. And with this, I wanted the, I didn't want the end listener to have to think about, oh, there's two lead vocals. I just wanted them to get lost in the song. And so I wanted the two lead vocals to match as, as evenly as possible so that it would sound like one stereo vocal performance to the listener. Uh, so all of that timing correction was every bit as important to the mix as was, <laughs> as was the autotune, as was the law comp. <clears throat> but law comp really makes your life just super easy if you don't know how to mix. So lay down, lay down, lay down. I'm going to have some decorum here. Is not Congress. All right. Um, as you can see, even guys like Prizzy are using a uh, law comp on Usher. So, us pros, this is plenty, plenty, all the power that any pro needs. But the simplicity of this thing, the way that I built it, is just like it's it's built for people who don't know what they're doing. If you have a vocal. This chain is probably going to control it and probably going to improve it and make it sound better. If you got drums, punch chain is usually the way to go. If you got 808s, usually panda is the way to go. This is like you want some subtle compression and maybe open up the top end or fatten it up a little bit, then, then peacock. And if you want, like, starting with just beautiful mild saturation that just makes things feel bigger and warmer and ah, we nailed it with the dragon chain uh, and then into heavy saturation it'll take like a clean uh, electric guitar track uh, like a direct guitar and and take it from like this nice clean tone to a nice broken up tone to like almost like a big muff uh, pedal tone it's it's yeah we we crushed this shit uh, so Sorry, to toot my own horn here, but, uh, I mean, somebody's got to let you guys know all the good stuff we got. I had a feeling this would happen. I knew it right from the start. I want my this time to start again.
chains, basically what I do with this thing is I'll dial it into the chain that I think is going to be the chain. And then I audition the other chains and just go like, well, what if? I mean, what if I'm wrong and something else sounds even better? And uh, uh, so I just, you know, I just kind of get the right amount of push and I just listen. I had a feeling this would happen. I knew it right from the start I wonder if this time To start again Oh baby So many different flavors uh, What other really cool mix Yeah, I got some questions to answer, okay uh, Ben Kruger asks, Hey Ken, how often are you using outboard gear on your mix bus? Lately, uh, never. Um, and there's a really practical reason. I would love, I would, I would love to use analog gear on my mix bus, but we are in a stems world now. And you know, I'm mixing stereo and I'm mixing Atmos and I'm in sync world. So I need to provide stems for the label and the artist and I need to provide stems for sync licensing and for Atmos and oh my God, it's stem, 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 stems. So uh, printing through an analog mix bus means real time, one at a time uh, with additive noise and uh, in the box does not. So I, I will use uh, analog gear on inserts and then I will uh, print them through those inserts before I print a final mix so that you get the analog goodness uh, in the chain um, committed uh, forever and ever. So there you go. Uh, and Ben also asks, um, hey Ken, what percentage of your mixes do you master versus send to a dedicated mastering engineer? I master 100% of my mixes. They always go out as I want to hear them on the radio or on streaming, on Spotify, on my phone, on, you know, whatever. Uh, that's how I send them out. I never want my client to guess at like, well, I mean, I think I love his mix, but, um, I, you know, once we have, uh, Chris Athens or Howie Weinberg touch it, then it's going to really come out like, no, I want them to hit play and go like, oh, we real, wow, we got something. Shit. Okay. Yeah, this is fire. And then, you know, uh, then it's an easy tell them like, yeah, it's master, but you can definitely master it with a goat mastering uh, engineer, and you know they'll give you zero to five percent more goodness with it. And uh, feel free. I I love when the when any mastering engineer can improve my stuff. Uh, you know, it helps me on my next mixes go like, how did they do that? And, you know, and it's helped me build other techniques just from listening to different sounds that other mastering engineers have gotten on my uh, uncompressed mixes. So, interessante. Uh, Simmer Music asks, Hey Ken, how do you glue the background vocals together? Do you use multiband compression? Uh, I use law comp. I mean, uh, really, I don't think much about it. I try and get as much control as fast as possible. Usually one performance dictates most of the performances in that group. If not all, you got to listen and pay attention. But for the most part, you dial one in really well, and then you just copy that plug into all of the notes in that group, and then you move to the next group and you do it again. Um, and then you uh, move with those groups. Uh, so um, I don't think Lol Comp has multiband compression in it. But it does have tilt and awaken and a whole lot of stuff that add uh, the ability to shape in ways that not even multiband compressors can. So there you have it. So uh, so that's about wrapping up. If everybody's out of questions and we're out of time, and uh, thank you again for joining us for another great mixing night. October, we are back, I think, November 1st. Uh, night after Halloween. We are back November 1st on uh, Wednesday night for our November show. We are going to be live from Thatmo Studio A. Oh, I cannot wait to show you guys the full studio. It's bananas. It's going to be so cool. Uh, so tune in in November. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Definitely enter the Gleam contest for the Focusrite uh, compressor mic pre giveaway. 
Uh, and uh, if I don't give Mazzy more treats, she is going to Ramsey Bolton me. So you all have a great night from me and the entire Mixing Night crew. Uh, thank you all, and uh, we'll see you next month. Good night.